When we left off, we had just finished installing furring strips and insulation in Makara's gutted galley and salon. Watch me trace all of these out while not looking like me. If you've been following along with our adventures, you'll remember that I had used craft paper to make templates for our new wall panels aboard Makara, which I then transferred to cardboard to use as a test piece in the boat. Confident that I had the right shapes, it was now time to transfer these to the ply and make the cuts. Voila, done. My dad cut out these uneven, not at all square or uniform shapes using a circular saw and a jigsaw. Oops. Yeah. Next, we coated them front and back with primer to seal the wood on both sides and prepare the front side for painting. We're gonna try and get some walls back on here today. We've got our insulation in. We've got the fairing strips. In between the fairing strips is our insulating foam. This is half inch poly iso closed cell foam. Should give us a bit of insulation. Maybe we'll try and get some up here tonight too. To install the panels, we held them up with a clamp and tie pre-drilled holes. Then we screwed them into the furring strips with stainless screws, which would eventually get covered with trim pieces. Well, we're finally getting to the stage where we actually feel like we're making progress and doing something, even though we've been very busy doing all sorts of things, but we are putting some of our wall panels up. The walls are quarter inch ply and we have primed them. Once we have them up, it took a bit of fitting here to get all the corners and angles and port lights just right. So we're screwing them in now and once they're up, then we will paint them and we have we're hoping to reuse the trim that came off of it. We'll see um, if that's a possibility or if we'll be doing new trim. Action. No, 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 no. we pull that to shit. Yeah. Nice. Perfect doffy. It fits. Well, it is a beautiful, sunny, gorgeous fall day here taking advantage of the good weather today to get our port lights reinstalled, rebedded. We had most of the port lights in the main, uh, all the port lights in the main salon pulled out and also the one up in the forward cabin. Now it's time to put them back in. Before reinstalling the port lights, I used acetone and a razor blade to make sure the frame, fiberglass, and fastener holes were completely clean of the old adhesive so that we could get a good seal. Okay, so put your screws in first, maybe, and then okay. Sure nice. Before putting in the fasteners, I gave each one of them a collar of butyl tape to waterproof the screw holes. Even though we had done lots of dry fitting, with slightly thicker walls and new materials, getting everything lined up was very challenging. Okay, I might be able to get that. Okay. Good. 
Once the port lights were in, I packed the frame and any gaps with more butyl. For those of you who aren't familiar with butyl, it's a highly malleable rubber sealant that creeps into crevices, creating a watertight seal when compressed and is great to use on boats. Our port lights are kind of a weird design. I don't know, we think they might've been modified from the originals. Um, they just kind of through bolt through the fiberglass into the port light frame on the other side. And then the outside frame, these frames, we think they've been replaced at some point from the original. Usually you would have a through bolt that goes through this frame, through the boat, and then bolts to the inside of the port light frame. Ours, these holes don't actually line up with the bolt holes on the inside of the frames. And the frames are just screwed into the fiberglass and then the port lights through bolted through the fiberglass to the inside. So it's not as secure or sandwiched as we'd like it to be, but it's what we got. So we're gonna bed them down. We got lots of butyl in there. See how it goes. Loving the strangely dry fall weather here in the Pacific Northwest, we worked late into the night to finish the installation. Time to remove this large forward hatch here. It is well beyond its years and because it hasn't really been cared for, it will cost quite a bit of money to try and get this hatch back in service. Uh, the actual company that made these hatches will do refurbishment on them, but it would well and truly cost us well over a thousand dollars. And that's a lot more than what we could just get a newer hatch. Maybe it's not as good a quality, it'd be debatable, but we can get a new Lumar hatch for a fraction of that price. And that's what we're gonna replace these with. Hillary and I got all the through bolts out of this forward hatch and we're gonna take it off. We're gonna see what's actually holding this down. This hatch is obviously the, it's a very large hatch and it's the most forward. So it takes a lot of water over the bow. And it leaks a lot. It leaks a lot. So this is just silicon down, I believe. That's it. It's <laughs> all that holds this guy down. That's why that. it was leaking. Oh. It was just the bolts holding it in. A little bit of just old silicon, I guess. Didn't seem to really be holding it down much. Really nothing around the holes. So that's just the water would have been coming in through the holes. We knew this is one of the spots where we were taking on a lot of water when we were underway in Makara. Waves coming over, rain, anything. There's always quite a bit of water coming through up here and that would be why. It was basically just bolted down with some really old silicone. We had done our best to kind of rework the gasket around it prior to leaving Hawaii, but that didn't matter because it was basically just bolted down with hardly any silicone. It's very old silicone holding it, so the water was just coming underneath. So hopefully this new one will be nice and watertight. With the wall panels up and most of the port lights in, we began installing our new headliner. For this, we were using a plank beadboard or wainscoting. It came in eight foot by seven inch sections and was made of vinyl, making it easy to cut, fit, and install. Each plank clipped together with a tongue and groove fitting, and then we used screws to fasten them to the furring strips about every two and a half feet. While Ty measured and cut each piece, I worked to install the insulation that layered underneath. We opted not to use any adhesive to adhere the foam insulation, making it easy to remove if we ever needed to access behind it. To install, I cut each piece to size, wedging them in between the furring strips. As we finished up the main salon, our thoughts began to shift to the empty and bare forward cabin. 
But that's our next adventure. Thanks so much for watching, and a huge thanks to our patrons who support the continued making of these videos. If you enjoyed, please remember to give us a thumbs up and subscribe! Until next time!